All right, I'm going to talk about um, two finger hammer ons and pull offs, or, or rather, playing hammer ons and pull offs up the neck. Um, so, you don't see a lot of tabs where they're playing up the neck. A lot of times it's just sort of one finger dynamics. It's a missed opportunity because you can do some pretty cool things. Uh, uh, when you work up the neck. Um, So, how do we do that, right? Um, I really should do a different video and talk about theory, um, but when you're playing in a scale, uh, all the notes you hit, they really fall um, within the chord shapes. So if, if I was in open G, I can play st strings open, that's in G. I can do a C shape, I can do a D shape, and then I play the F shape a whole step up and that's also a G. So once again, it's G, C, D, G. And then, of course, there's a C and a D up here. And if you really want, you can do a G up here. And there's a lot more chord shapes that you can work with. But what I'm getting at is if you notice that um, wherever my fingers are placed within the chords that are in the scale of G, that's a valid place to strike a string. So in this case, I'm doing the C shape. And you'll notice that my ring finger on the first string on the second fret, that's in the key of G. So if I do open, those strings are valid for hammer-ons and pull-offs. And if I do the G shape, or sorry, the D shape, some people play the full D, you'll notice that my pinky finger is on the fourth fret of the first string. And I had, when I was doing the C shape, my ring finger was on the second fret of the first string. That means that the fourth fret and the second fret of the first string are fair game for hammer-ons and pull-offs, so. And if I do the G shape, or sorry, the F shape in the G position, you notice that my pinky finger is on the fifth fret of the first string. That means that the fifth fret, first string, fourth fret, first string, second fret, first string, and open are all in the same key. And again, you can also do the D shape up here, and you'll notice that the seventh fret is fair game. So you see a lot of seventh to fifth, right? So, I'm going to slow this way down now and talk about the actual act of doing a pull-off. Um, and why doing a pull-off is harder than doing a hammer-on. Um, so, if, if you've done normal hammer-ons and pull-offs closer to the root, you, you just pretty much use one finger, right? So, it's just going to be... But if you've done the pull-offs, you notice to get the best sound, you strike the string and then you kind of kind of pluck a little bit. A hammer-on's easy, you just come down. And what I'm doing there is I'm striking the third string at the and I hammer on at the second fret. And I'll do the same thing on the second string, first fret, right? Hammer on there. Pull off, hammer on and pull off. But where it gets tricky is when you want to work up the neck a little bit, right? So, how did I do that, right? I'm, I'm holding my finger down 
where I had done the hammer on on the second string first fret and I use my ring finger and I'm doing the hammer on and I'm going to do the pull off. In the same sense I've got to lift my finger but as I'm lifting I'm going to catch the string with a little bit of the fleshy tip of my finger so I get a bit of a pluck. If I don't do that that's fine but it's not going to be as pronounced it's just going to be a little faint because the string is losing the power and the vibration because the string is essentially getting longer. So if you do a little bit of a pluck, you can add a little bit of volume. Now doing all this on the fifth, on the first string is a lot easier and that's why uh, you see people do this usually on the first string. Um, so for example, I'll, I'll play from what is that? The uh, ninth to the seventh fret on the first string. And that's, of course, the seventh to the fifth fret. And I can do that here from the from the fifth to the fourth. And I can do that anywhere up the neck as long as the notes that I'm playing are within the key. Um, I'm going to do that a little slower. Now I'm making this especially hard because I'm only doing hammer-ons and pull-offs. Usually in the song it's not as um, densely packed with ha pull-offs and hammer-ons as you see here. So, but really, if we're just focusing on the one pull-off, it's, and that's it. So you strike the first string. I'm using my middle finger now in a downward motion. Some people use their pointer finger. I'll strike the string, make sure the note is clean, and then at the eighth note, breaking the quarter note in half, I'll pull that off. So if you're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, I'll do that a little slower. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and. My tongue's getting a little tied trying to do this, but. you usually only see those hammer-ons and pull-offs on those eighth notes that break up the quarter notes, the and of the beat. Um, the reason why is because your finger's coming down every quarter beat, so... So I'm going to throw in a little extra credit here. Um, when I play most songs, and this is, uh, I'll usually use um, chords to work off the chords. So if I'm doing a song in G, go to C, D, G. So what I'll do is, if I can, if I have a finger available, I'll do pull-offs or hammer-ons within the shape of the chord that's available to me. For example, one of my favorites is when I'm doing this uh, this F shape on that G, I can take that middle finger and, and pull it off. Well, obviously I don't have an extra finger that I can do a two finger, so it's gonna have to pull off to the root. And if I'm doing the, the C shape, take that ring finger and I can strike that first string and pull off with my ring finger while I maintain the shape of the chord. But where this, uh, where playing up the neck and doing the two finger technique holds, uh, becomes relevant is I can play the C 
up the neck at the fifth fret by barring all four strings down and then I can take my ring finger and I can go to the seventh fret So that's where this te technique has value. Um, it's a little harder because you're doing a lot of things at the same time. You're holding the cord and you're doing a pull off and a hammer on or, or any kind of dynamic to break those notes in half. And I think that's why drop thumb is so popular because it makes playing up the neck easier without having to do those dynamics. Drop thumb break d achieves the same thing. It, brought, it breaks, breaks those quarter notes in half without having to do anything over here, so it's actually a lot easier. And if you're not too particular about what notes are being played, then a lot of times that's gonna get the job done. So, anyway, I'll, I'll do another video where I talk more about chords, but um, I wanted to kind of weave that in because it's important to remember that uh, pull-offs and hammer-ons are not just the domain of playing open. It sounds impressive, it sounds real folksy, but it's really limited because you're just playing in a G chord and you're playing dynamics off of the G. And a lot of old time banjo is like that. But if you want to play songs. You're gonna to want to do the dynamics off of the chords. So, anyway, we'll talk more about that later. Hope that helps.